Welcome back to the Legends Lounge. I have with me their MVPs, ABA MVPs, their champions, finals MVPs, all-stars, all-NBAs, all of that. Uh, I include myself with that, but that's the four gentlemen, or excuse me, the three gentlemen with me. I have Bill Walton to my left. I have Archie Clark to my right. I have Spencer Haywood to his right. Uh, we get into a conversation just about some of the things that these, these gentlemen have done to, to pioneer the game in their way what it took for them to find, you know, what their mission is in life. And we give some flowers at the end because we, we are big on giving flowers to people while they can smell them. So we hope you enjoy. Arr! There you go. <laughs> I want Spencer Haywood hey. right here now. Now. There we go. <laughs> Come on, I got a fish on me. Got a fish on me. <laughs> Sonic. Shake and bake, Archie. Just <laughs> chill out here, 80 years old. Yes, Fantastic. I am. Man. You look I great. Have a, I have a birthday in what seven days now. I'll be 81. 81. 81. Fantastic. All the way from Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is a journey for you. Right. Yeah. I was the baby when my mom and dad moved to to Michigan. Moved right outside of Detroit. Mm. I was two years old, so I lived in Detroit area for 79 years almost. So Detroit. And you're still there. And, yeah. and when you were growing up, who were your boyhood heroes that inspired you to get to where you are today? Well, I, I had um, one of the guys who was you know, a high school football player. His name was uh, Roosevelt Jones. He was a, a heck of a football player, and, and I admired his work ethic. He was a player or the coach? He was a player. player. He was a player. And you and played I, football as well? I started out playing a little football. I stopped playing in my sophomore year. And because I you just, were shaking fake. Well, yeah, not so only that. You're supposed to be on the basketball and, court. Not only that, I was a baseball player. Whoa. So he did some of everything. Right. In fact, I was a baseball player even in college. National championship team. At Minnesota. At the University of Minnesota. But you didn't go straight from high school to college. You went into the military. The military, yeah. Right. Before yes. college. Yes, I yeah. did. And I left home when I was 18 and went in, into the Army. I volunteered for the Army. Uh, what years were these? This is the 1959. We had a slight recession in the Detroit area. Okay. Couldn't get a job. So I went into the Army and became a soldier. So how'd you end up on the basketball court? How'd you end up from the from the No, but you got to one more story about his soldiering when he was. There's more. Like, yeah. Well, I was a soldier, like I said. Okay. He was but, in the army, and he was on the army team, right? Well, and then somebody no, saw no, no, him. He was, no, no, no. He was like one one particular outing he had right. with his troops. Oh well, I, I'm not going to talk about the troops. I'm going to talk the basketball story in okay. terms of how I, I, I got more involved in basketball. I really wanted to be a baseball player, but. Every, you know, base that I went to didn't have a baseball team at the time. So I played basketball. And uh, in my last year, I was stationed right outside of Washington, D.C. And we had an intramural program with Andrews Air Force Base, even though I was in the Army. The base uh, coach saw me playing in an intramural and asked me to come out for the base team. So I made the base team. I became all Air Force. I made all Air Force. Well, you weren't even in, yeah, I was like, you weren't even in the was, Air Force. Or I was in first the Army. Offer. They cut orders for me to play, you know, uh, in the Air Force, and I became, uh, like I said, all Air Force. And, and the coach of the team was alumni of uh, Minnesota, and he helped me get a scholarship to University of Minnesota. Mm. And I went up to University of Minnesota. I, my thought was, I will play. And, and that coach was John Cundler, right? No, well, the coach was John Cundler of the team, but the base, but, uh, his name was uh, Buzz Bennett. He had played at the university, and uh, so he got me a scholarship there. But I, I was looking at it from this perspective. I would play basketball, then I would play baseball, and then I would sign a baseball contract. So and you were thinking baseball all along? All along. I was looking at it from baseball. We were national champs. I was starting center fielder in my sophomore year, but I didn't hit that well. And I didn't have any coaches, I mean, uh, uh, not coaches, but... Uh, like training? No, I didn't have any uh, 
people from the baseball area to come in and say, hey, I would like for you to like play scout. for us or a scout. Mm -hmm. Well, when I had a scout that uh, came at a, at a game at Ohio State, and I hit the ball pretty well that time, that day, and he asked me, do you hit the ball like that? And I'm honest as I am, I said, I mean, I, I hit the power when I hit it. There you go, <laughs> there you go. Uh, Archie, where does your social conscience history and, and, and the core of your humanity come from? Uh, it was always a part of me. I, I just didn't know what, who Archie really was. It took me 76 years before I found out that Archie is a helper. Hmm. Yeah. That's we'll my whole we'll personality. That. You're a man of service. I, I, yeah, a man of service. I, um, I, I asked myself and I asked who I consider the supreme power to let me know who Archie is because I've done a lot of things and it hit me. We had a, um, a 25th anniversary of this organization and after I came back from New Orleans I was sitting in my basement and I just kind of was thinking and all of a sudden it just showed me you are a helper. That's who I am and I've been doing it all my life. I mean it, it just was natural, but I never knew that that was the case because I wanted to be a baseball player. I ended up being a basketball player, you know what I mean? And then I went into public service as, as in, uh, I was administrative assistant to uh, the mayor for the local community I, I'm from called in Michigan. Course in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And also I, I went into uh, county government. I was director of department of public uh, got jobs and economic development, which helped a lot of the local communities mm -hmm. in terms of putting resources in those communities. And it was, you know, really gratified for me to be able to help, especially my community, E-Course, and the neighboring community of River Rouge, which is right outside of Detroit. So, so now Spencer, you've got some Detroit roots. You grew up there. When, yeah, when, when did you first Spencer, come? Here? Spencer grew up on the Delta. Man. <laughs> I was say, he, he grew up. He grew, no, you're right. He, up on, he moved to the Dump. You're right. And then Thank he went to that. Chicago first. Oh, yeah, and, and then he went to Detroit. First and I found out my brothers who would come home to Mississippi, I thought they were rich. And I, I got up to Chicago and they were poorer than I was. <laughs> <laughs> so I went on down to Bowling Green with my brother Leroy. You know Leroy. I know Leroy. And so when I got down there, um, and I, I was playing ball against uh, Nate Thurman, Howard Colmeyer, so all of those guys from Bowling Green. And what years were these, Spencer? This was in 1965. Okay. And so then they put on a big... In Bowling Green, Kentucky or Ohio? Ohio. Excuse me. You gotta clarify. Excuse me. You gotta clarify. Just and I gotta clarify. Out. Silver City, it ain't no silver and it ain't no city. <laughs> That's the place. But it's the population Mississippi. of 300 people. Mm -hmm. That was and the we place in Mississippi. Cotton from, yeah, big cotton from sun up to sundown. That's how I learned to work hard, my work ethic. But now, for I, those of you who don't know Spencer's story, please, you have to read the book that he put out with Scott Osler, yeah. The Rise, The Fall, Fall and The, the Recovery. Recovery. But the newer one is the last one was with Mark Spears and Gary Washburn, which is um, uh, the Spencer Haywood rule. And when did that come out? Last year. I missed it. I got to get you one. I'll buy it. And Archie buy had books. a tremendous book that came out last year, too. Tell us about your Yeah, let's hear about that, Archie. Uh, well, yeah, I, I had a, a, a young fellow who was a writer, but he was also a researcher. And we did we come together and we did a book. It's called Shake and Bake: The Life and Times of Archie Clark. Mm -hmm. Nice. And, and uh, it 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 goes through my whole history. Uh, you know, going from uh, service all the way through the basketball, and then all the years in the NBA. How'd you meet these guys? Because we had we, we did. I met Archie before. when I first joined the NBA in 1974. Mm -hmm. uh, he had been on the Lakers, mm -hmm. but I didn't get to Los Angeles until 1970. Mm -hmm. 
And so I first met Wilt when the Lakers, you must have been there that day in San Diego when the Lakers came to play the Rockets at the sports arena and our high school team would play the openers for the Rockets in I those remember, days. That. And that's when I first met Wilt and I was like 16 or 17 well, and he couldn't no, have been I, I was traded for Wilt. Oh, okay. In 1968, uh, we had a real good team, uh, the Lakers. It was myself, Jerry West, and Elgin Baylor. We were all all-stars. But we lost to Boston in the 1968 finals, and Russ, Russell dominated us going down through the stretch. And so Jack Kent Cook, who was owner of the Lakers, mm -hmm. he wanted a, a championship team in L.A. badly. Right. So he decided after that season he had to get somebody to go up against Russ. Russell. And he traded me to Philadelphia. So I'm... Uh, one of the trivial questions, who was traded for Will? Well, Archie Clark. Yes. And when you're traded for Will, you're pretty darn good. <laughs> pretty well, you made all-star well, team in Philadelphia all as well. Yes, I made the all-star team. You were a four-time all-star, correct, in the NBA? No, I was only a two-time. I should have been a four-star, a five, even maybe possibly five. Ten. No, no, no um, well, five out of, well, see, I, my seventh year, I got injured. Okay. And I had a terrible shoulder separation, so I played the last three years with a bad shoulder. Where were you at by then? What team were you with? Well, I was with the Bullets when I got hurt, and then I, uh, they traded me to Seattle, and I had a chance to play with Spencer. With this guy? Yeah. yeah. And, and Seattle had never made the All-Star. I took them to the All-Star. I mean, not <laughs> the, the playoffs. playoffs. The playoffs. playoffs. Yeah. They had never made the playoffs, so I, I tell Russell that every time I see him, hey, yeah, I, I helped <laughs> I, take you to to the playoffs. We had, we had Walt Hazard on that team. Yeah, what was, Walt, who else Walt was on that team? Team? Walt was gone. That's yeah. the reason why. What year was this? This is 1974-75. So Bill Russell was the coach. He yeah. was the coach. Yeah. And so I, I, I get on him every time he, he <laughs> say, hey man, I saved your job. <laughs> Let me tell you all, uh, when I got to Detroit, what happened was I had no place to stay. And so Will Robinson was over on the side looking at me and they had the you know outside outdoor crunk basketball mm -hmm. league that was outside. Right. So I came in town, the young boy from the country, and I wanted to show the city boys I knew how to play. Uh -huh. So I played in the All Star game against all of the George Traps and all of the guys out there, and I ran and dominated them. And, and all I wanted was a Fago soda pop, because <laughs> you know Fago uh -huh. Detroit pop. So. Uh -huh. uh, and then they said, well, let's see how well it can do against the college boys. Now, I'm, you know, 15, I'm like filling my oats. So I played against Cassie Russell, Bill Buttons, and all of those guys. And then I did pretty good. And Dave Bing said, come on, man, try out and play with us, the uh -huh. pros. And I was like, the pros? <laughs> I'm playing with the pros? I'm from Silver City. <laughs> I don't even you're have the, a TV. You're in the big leagues now. It wasn't silver and it wasn't the silver city. city. Man. I read the book. Man. You were living between the cotton fields where you spent the daytime and the dump where you spent the evening. That's where you went shopping. Been shopping in the yeah. dump. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so I ended up going to uh, Detroit and playing at Persian High School. And then I went to the Olympics in 68. Came back from the Olympics, went to the ABA. What about Trinidad Community College? I was at the dad, but I went to from <laughs> Trinidad to uh, to the Olympics, the first and only player ever. Colorado, right? What about yeah, the drive down the hill? The drive down the hill. <laughs> we was on. Uh, no, well, no, it's that. fine. <laughs> <laughs> you were trying to figure out how the car works. How the car works? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. sure. There we go. <laughs> Archie, tell us about the beginning of this organization here, the early days and. The conversations that went down and who was the. But Bill, let me point. tell you Before one thing about that. Archie. Okay. Because <laughs> I got to tell you yeah. another story because I, I was getting to it. <laughs> okay, sorry. Right. He so I, here I am. I'll try to control myself. So here I am, the man, you know, in the ABA, an MVP, rookie of the year, leading scorer, leading rebounder. So Emmett, Brian, and Bala, who was uh, Roberta Duran's trainer, hmm. we're going to take a trip to Panama. Panama. So I'm down there, I'm telling Archie, hey man, you know, I'm, I'm good, I'm good 19, 20 years old. Man, you know, I'm a rich guy, man. I got all of the money out of the ABA. And Archie said, I don't think so. Look at that country. 
So I looked at the contract again, and it was like a fraudulent contract. So Archie said, you got to fight to, you got to fight to play, man. You can't go back to the ABA. What are you going to do? So he was my uh, encouragement mm. and mentor me to go to come to the NBA, come to the NBA and fight yeah. for the right. How did you have that vision? He was always helping. Like I tell you, now when we had the 75th helper. birthday of Kareem, right. and Kareem whispering in my ear, man, you make sure you tell Archie this, make sure you tell Archie this. <laughs> I'm like, Kareem, it's your birthday, me and you, Bill, <laughs> what are you going to tell Archie all of this stuff? Because <laughs> he admired Archie so much because We Archie all admire Archie. Archie. Yeah, that's the just thing. Fantastic. He's a giver. player, a human being, a leader, a guy who just lives by moral and ethical code, ethical code. sacrifice, honor, and yeah. discipline. That Thank you, Archie. Question for you, Bill, because we, we're trying to get the situation. See, my life is totally different. You no, know, your me. life is... Because I didn't grow up with a silver spoon. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't live in Silver City, and I didn't grow up in Arkansas, man. I grew up in the tough, mean streets of San Diego. Oh, so you, you made it real bad. <laughs> On the beach. I'm glad you made it out, man. Yeah. And people have always been nicer to me than I deserve. Yeah. I started playing against NBA players when I was 14 years old when the San Diego Rockets expanded uh, to San Diego. And, mm. with, uh, and was Will Chamberlain the coach? No. He coached the ABA team. Uh, when I was in college, okay. when he, right when he left the NBA. Okay. Uh, that was in the uh, 73, 74. Yeah, okay. now, let me ask you, Bill, because we're trying to get to sit down. You said you'd do this under one condition. Right. Is that we had Archie Clark here, is that we had right. Spencer Haywood. Well, this is the history. You know, this, is, this is why we are who we are. Mm -hmm. These are the guys who, just, who stood up and said, this is nonsense. This is ridiculous. We're not going to be better. We're not going to do this, and we're going to do something about it. And a lot of people talk, a lot of people whine, complain, make excuses. And these guys act, and these guys are my heroes. And here, here I was, little Billy. I mean, Archie's going to be 81 next week. Spencer, you're 73. I 73. 73. Man, I'm just a, I'm just a young child at 69. <laughs> so I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I know these guys. I've lived with these guys. I've played with them, fought with them cried with them and but I've also had my life impacted by them yeah. because of their willingness to stand up and say look what you're doing is absurdly nonsensical and we're not going to stand for that anymore yeah. and what we have today a life that is better can it be better yet certainly and that's what the struggle is all about and the give and take and that's why I'm so proud honored and privileged to be Archie's friend mm -hmm. And Spencer's friend, and that's why I wanted to do this show, okay. because they're the show. I'm just a prop. Oh, <laughs> man. I'm just a pot of plans. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I just want to also thank you, Archie, for putting together the Retired Players Association. I know it was difficult in the beginning because you know you had to bring certain people on and you had to make it work, and for the last. 29 years, 30 years now, how have you seen what you guys put together has grown now to where we are? Well, if, if you saw what... Yeah, you saw we, had a, we had a room you full saw, of people. Uh, yes. We had, it, we it, have it has our players are uh, stronger now, it, and then we have it, a lot of young players who have asked it, me, how do I get involved? And so, mm -hmm. yeah, we got we have a bright well, future. Most yeah. importantly, though, yeah. the players it, are empowered. Yes. Yeah. And what you have lived through in your lives, and all the obstacles and the barriers and the hurdles and the adversity, it, it, it's it's staggering to me that our country doesn't realize, appreciate, and insist on the presence of unions. You guys are from Detroit, an incredible, yeah. once in a great city. David Marin is the remarkable book of this time in early in the early 1960s in, in Detroit, and just the history of our country, and, and, and the greatness of our country comes from the strength of working people. And that's what breaks my heart, because we have these companies today that are constantly trying to crush unions and to break unions, and I'm waiting for the leaders of these companies like Amazon, Amazon, <laughs> Starbucks, uh, Tesla, mm -hmm. uh, all these companies are doing fabulously well. I'm waiting for them to come out and say, we want a unionized workforce because a unionized workforce is going to be better for everybody. 
Speaking of unions, actually, uh, the idea of forming a retired players association pretty much, pretty much came from uh, the ideas about union people. Mm. I went to a, uh, I was involved in, in a political group. He and uh, a friend of mine and I formed it in, in 1971. Okay. But anyway, uh, I was still playing basketball at the mm. time. But I went to a, uh, a Democratic convention in the state and the UAW retirees mm -hmm. was so important during that period and how they influenced not only that Democratic Party, but how the, the retirees were so respected right. by the, the, the everyday union guys at mm -hmm. that time. So uh, I had been a player rep for you know, the PA and the NBA for about eight of the 10 years that I played. And I thought, and I said, well, why can't the retired players be part of right. the well, can we have something PA? like that? No, part of the, the Players that. Association. So I went to Larry Fleischer, who at that time was the, uh, he was like the general counsel and the CEO of, of the PA at that particular time. And I asked He him, was the PA, other than the players. Right. But Larry volunteered. He didn't get paid for that. I, I understand. <laughs> but he was so in, influential, and so I, I asked him, why couldn't we be part of, of as, as retired players, why couldn't we be part of, of the, the, the players' union? Right. Well, he told me, he said the bylaws wouldn't allow it. That's how he came up on me. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I, I thought about, well, why, why not start a, a, a players' association? Why not start a retired players' association? And I told him about it, and he, he kind of thought that was a pretty good idea. And he said to me, he said, uh, you know, maybe the proceeds from All-Star Saturday mm -hmm. could go to help you guys, you know, start this uh, Players Association. He said, uh, David Stern and I are pretty good friends. He said, I'm going to talk to David about it. So he talked to David, and he got back to me. He said, David said, no, he's not, he's not going to get those, let those funds be part of, of, of any kind of association. He was going to put together a Legends Foundation, and he's going to use those proceeds to, to fund the, the Legends retirement. Foundations, and they, those funds was going to go to retired players. Right. And um, so I, I, when Larry told me about that, I said, well, can we have a meeting with David? At that time, I had gotten with David Bing, and we had got with Oscar, and we was trying to see how we could form an association. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Larry set the meeting up, and we met with David Stern, and the three of us were sitting there, and David said, no, he's not going to do that. He told us what he was going to do with those funds. So, and he said, well, why don't you guys be on the board? of the Legends Foundation. Well, Oscar and Dave Bing, was just, they were totally upset. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't too much care for that. Yeah. But anyway, we had a little meeting. I said, no, man, let's, let's, let's go ahead and get on the board. So we got on the board, and we served on that board for over 20-something years, and we set up the structure for helping retired guys and everything. But I still, uh, along with Dave and Oscar at that mm -hmm. time, we still said we was going to see how we could form a retired players association. And so Larry passed away, and the new executive director was uh, a guy named uh, Charlie Grantham. So I went to Charlie, and I said to Charlie, hey, man, why don't you let us be part of the Players Association? He said, uh, I know you guys want to uh, start a, a retired Players Association, because he had heard mm -hmm. what we were trying to do. He said, tell you what, he said, um, I could help you guys get started. He said, I got a guy who's uh, an attorney for Ropes and Grays. He's, he's a fine young man. He could, he could probably put together, you know, your structure and everything. Mm -hmm. He said, but you guys need some white boys, some white players. Because it was just me, Oscar, and Dave at the time. And so Oscar went and talked to Dave Collins. Dave Bing went and talked to Dave Busher. 
coming from my background, I didn't have a white guy that I was, <laughs> I was, I was gonna say who they tell you to talk close, to close close with. So I I, I passed on it, and so yeah. it was a bill. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how you guys met. I couldn't speak. I'm a lifelong stutterer. But all yeah. these great yeah. stories. Yeah. There's a new book out called The Cap. Mm -hmm. How Larry Fleischer and David Stern built the modern NBA. Yes. And the yeah. history, not so much of the NBRPA, but mm -hmm. the history of the NBPA mm -hmm. is just delineated, just magnificently. Josh Mendelson is the author. Oh, and yeah. I, I just read this book, yeah. and it's a fabulous read, and yeah. incredible history, and the stories. And, and then from that, from Larry Fleischer, who was just incredible. Yeah. And then. The, him and David Stern coming together yeah. to make the economic uh, profit revenue sharing of the league income. Mm -hmm. It's just That's where it this, really took off. That's yeah. where it really took off. And then with with Archie and Dave and Dave and Dave. I guess you gotta be named Dave to Almost. be a part of it. <laughs> and Oscar. Three they, three they said, Oscar. They said, you know, we've got to do this for ourselves. Yeah. And uh, and, and it worked. And it, it's just been magnificent. We want it to be better. Well, we because we up, have because we the players up, have critical we, needs. And right. We put up each of us at the time. Five of us put a thousand dollars, and we gave it to. Uh, what year was this? This was nineteen ninety two. Ninety two. Okay. So we had been years going ago. at this from the latter part of the eighties, and it took us all these years to get together. And finally, in nineteen ninety two, the five of us got together. We put up the money and gave it to. Uh, Dennis Coleman, he became our first CEO. He he went and formed uh, us as a nonprofit 501c3 in New York, and uh, we became an entity mm. then on. And then it just started, and then we had the All Star Weekends yes. and the Legends Brunch, Brunch, which was just like ten yeah, people. Everybody, everybody. Now, let, let, now let, it's let, everybody. Let me show you how. Right. David, it wasn't let, always. You know, no, was, no, let no. me show you also how David Stern ended up helping us. He, it seemed like he was really kind of going against us, but then we uh, we needed well, Dennis Coleman. Uh, we needed a new director, uh, uh, and so Dave Bing and I was charged with getting a, a new uh, CEO. So we interviewed Mel Davis. Mel Davis was was uh, head of the player development under David Stearns. Uh, we pulled him out of there and he became our CEO. Mel Davis ended up with David Stern giving us a licensing agreement That's right. that gave us the operating funds to form this organization and, wow. and keep it furnishing. So David Stearns ended up helping us as, as, as it, uh, even though initially we felt he was trying to undercut us. But, but he came around. He, he came, came around. around. And not only that, they, uh, Mel put together a luncheon, which is the, the brunch that happens on Sunday. Right. Uh, the and, best part of All-Star Weekend. And, 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 hey. and he invited uh, David Stern, and at that time Billy Hunter was head of the PA. Please. And it became such a success, David Stern took it over. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it was going well. He yeah. took it over because he, he, he brought his his supporters, uh, you know, from the league and everything. And, and the sponsors and the, and the sponsors advertisers and the, all, the, all know, the hardcore thing. fans. And, and it, it became quite television a, network. Right, became quite an event for, for our organization, Definitely. but also for the NBA. Well, let me do a little bit of background on Mel Davis. Mel Davis was at um, St. John and he also played with us at the, with the Knicks. He was a former player. I know. Yeah, so. I know. The killer. I know. Always <laughs> flexing. Right. <laughs> but so we, we, we pulled him out of that office and that really helped us. So Archie, where do you see it going from here? You know, it's a 30 year anniversary yes. this year. Yes, it wasn't what's that. on the horizon? Well, um, um, you know, you got young minds. I, I, I think that there are uh, you, those who are coming after us. I mean, you have players who have what they have foundations and everything. We can pull together a lot of things from from those 
guys, and at the same time, this organization is definitely going to be in a position to do more sponsorship type situations that brings in more revenue in, in the organization. And with those funds, uh, we can, you know, we can commit to certain kind of charities. I, I would like for us to make sure that we move in the direction of helping, uh, you know, from a cancer point of view, those who have prostate cancer, and as from the women's point of view who have breast cancer. In fact, I think a lot of men are starting to have a situation with breast cancer. But I think we could probably get, you know, uh, sponsorship from, say, maybe a car industry that really is targeting uh, the electric cars, which in, in turn could help as it relates to climate change. Right, right. We can look in, in the environment, you know what I mean? But I also think that that we should have a chapter in every NBA city. There you go. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And we only have at, the t at this time about 12, but I think there should be a chapter in every city that, that has a relationship with the NBA uh, because we're part of this NBA industry. Definitely. And mm -hmm. you know, speaking of like prostate cancer, I I'm a survivor. And, Me too. And so I've been working with your good buddy, um, Lynn Merritt, up yes. at Nike. Very nice. We are uh, working on this thing with also Michael Milken, mm -hmm. who they raise billions of dollars. They want to do a partnership with us. Okay. Mm. And so I will be making the introduction to Johnny and everybody. Oh, so that's wonderful. Can, and that would be our, we need a brand too, mm -hmm. you know, for the retired players. So that would be one of our brands. That's well, that's so, so Archie, we, we have the incredible success and the growth of the NBA to where it is today. Mm -hmm. The dream that we all had ha has become reality. Yeah. How do we, as the Retired Players Association, convince the current guys who never went through the struggle mm -hmm. but are re receiving the benefits to understand the importance of the solidarity of the movement, the solidarity of their commitment when so much of their life has been steered and pushed in the direction of being an individual as opposed to being part of a great team and organization. Well, we, we have to be those represent the representatives from this organization and, and get out and communicate with these uh, current players and, 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 and try to convince them that, that, that this organization is a platform for them as well. Right. And there's nothing like being part of a team. And, and there's team. nothing like seeing other people succeed. Right. And there's nothing like being there when somebody stumbles and falls mm -hmm. and right. able to pick them up and say, look, you're with us, let's you're go. With us. Yeah. That's why we got the helper. <laughs> <laughs> Shake and bake, Shake Arkansas, and bake. U.S. Army, yeah. <laughs> Minnesota. Yeah. Fourth all, round, all Air Force, fourth round all Air Force. Yeah, I, I made the All Air Force basketball. Team. All Air Force <laughs> basketball <laughs> team while in yeah. the Army. Yeah. But did you ever have the misfortune of playing for Hal Fisher on the Army national team? No, I didn't. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Are you speaking from experience? Did you? That's a story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> because this is a day about celebration. Yeah. Okay. This is a day about honoring <laughs> the founders and the legends and the, and the pillars okay. of who the NBRPA is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we recently had, a, I had a talk with Dave Bing and Dave Cowens and Johnny about, uh, we need to go to all 30 owners, and we just came up with a number, we just said $50,000 from their, their foundation. Foundation, farm. the NBA foundation. No, no, each team. The team from foundation. The, it just, you know, Mark Cuban, those guys, they're always like around, the they would like the to. Top. And that's like 1.5 million for. And what are we going to do with the money? Well, you know, you, you're the founder. You. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to talk. We can do, we you, can you do things. To, we we got to get we, the money first. We got to get the money first. We're dealing with prostate if we, cancer. If we go in, and deal with them, we, we should have. We should have a program. We should, yeah. yeah, we should. Well, I just brought we, it up okay. on my no, interview, so right. it was that kind of thing. Well, we, so. we, we would put together something. Uh, in fact, Dave is working on that right now. Oh, okay. Actually, well, cool. he's, he's working on where we're going from here. Archie, yeah. as you're closing in on 81, mm -hmm. share with us some of the things that you wish you had done in those 81 years. 
I wish I had not gotten injured in my seventh year of basketball. <laughs> I, I really, because I. It changes I, everything. Well, yeah, the level of play I was, I was a featured player at that particular time, and, and, and my career was, was still going up, and all of a sudden it was boom. It was, it, it, it was, it was really devastating, you know, to have to try to. Same with Spencer. Ball. Yes. You know, that's, that's the one regret that I, I have. Other than that, my life has been good, in a sense, in that I don't have any worries. You know, I'm what kind of advice do you have for the young guys coming up? Uh, advice: uh, be true to yourself. Yeah. Be true to yourself. Into your Arkansas roots. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you in Arkansas, man? Well, I was like say, two, two years. years. Two years man, right right no. my, 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 <laughs> my dad and mom, it was four of us, and I was the baby. I, I was two years old. That was in 1943 that uh, they went up to, to Michigan, uh, you know, subsequent to that. You and know, was it Detroit? It, right outside of Detroit. It's you know. like, yeah, it's it's one street, one street, one street apart. So, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's basically. I, I threw it's rocks at him. <laughs> <It's laughs> well, I, 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 and you I, couldn't I, hit him. I, I mean, couldn't I, hit him. I, I mean, I mean, he, he was shaking the, I mean, the, the, the city e-course, even though we're right there at, at the border of border. Detroit. Uh, but my, my dad, mom, they, you know, subsequent to that, you know, it was eight siblings, eight children, mm -hmm. you know, by my mom and dad, so. So well, you were the I second did, of ultimately eight. No, I was the fourth of. The eight. fourth. Child. Yeah, I had two older sisters and one older brother, but all the rest that came after me, which was eight of them. Uh, so we we grew up in in 1945 World War II projects, so we we come from very humble beginnings. Okay. I got you by two. It's uh, ten of us. It was, ten, <laughs> it was twelve of us. Oh, okay. So I got, I got you. you too, <laughs> <laughs> so to, to close this, Spencer, what advice would you give to like the young guys now? I would and I'll give the, the advice, and I, and I do whenever I can. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, they should consider uh, making a donation to the Retired Players Association because they are making these large sums of money, and uh, standing on the shoulders of Archie, Bill, and myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's appropriate that they make these donations to the foundation to help us grow and grow and right. grow. And it would make them feel so much better that by the doing people it. Before because you, it the did. People after you. Uh, I'll tell you, it did help. It made them feel so, so proud and so good when they helped us and, and got us this health insurance. Mm. It's been like a, a badge of honor for them. Mm -hmm. But I'm just Game saying. Game changing, life changing. Life changing. Yes. So, yes. I'm just saying to you now, please, do some more, and, I, and you're going to be so, you, you're hard. You talk about the giver. Listen to this man and the giver, and Bill. Learn from the giver. Yeah. yeah. So be just engaged. give a little bit. Just give be, a little bit. Be engaged. Because I'm saying, they, I see that, I go to their fundraisers and doing things mm -hmm. where they're donating millions of dollars to other people, and I still sit there like, but we got the NBA. Retired players. Right here. Oh, uh, duh. <laughs> There's nothing like being part of a special team. Special team. And, and your home we've, team. we've all chased that our yeah. entire lives mm -hmm. because it's so fragile and so tenuous. Yes. When you're there and when you're on that special team, you think, oh, it's going to be like this forever. It's going to be like this forever. And then, bam, oh, an injury. Mm -hmm. yeah. An injury. Yeah. An injury. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it changes immediately. It changes everything. Mm -hmm. And when the team is there, NBRPA, which is the ultimate team, yeah. as we go our different ways, mm -hmm. but it keeps bringing us back and the relationship, mm -hmm. and, and to see how well everybody's doing, yeah. but to understand, appreciate, acknowledge the challenges that so many people face, yeah. and, and that's our responsibility. Because with the privilege that we have, and we are privileged, e even though you did grow up in Arkansas, let me ask you this. Okay. There's a responsibility that comes with privilege. Yeah. And a, a responsibility to, to act appropriately and, and to not sit there and just let the evil and nonsense and absurdity yeah. take over. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, Bill, we will 
I heard in the background at our meeting out here tonight about Archie becoming a, a Hall of Famer as yes. a contributor. That was going to be my last question. And, you know, I support we have been around, I, I support it. And, I, and I'm going to do what I can. And I'm going to do what I can. Right. But he keeps telling me, no, I don't want it here. But Charlie, you don't count. Spencer, Archie is <laughs> Archie not, don't Archie count. is not a self promoter. I know, but hey, you gotta sit this one. I think they gonna handle it for you. You might, you might have to sit this one out. <laughs> is it time to go? <laughs> <laughs> he's too humble. But we, he's Archie Bill, Clark. Give me one. He's Archie Clark. He's shaking bake. There's Spencer. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you're. I'm tired. I'm just tired. Well, I'm you, just tired. Know, I'm you know, from a basketball uh, a contra contribution, I can say this that I popularized the crossover. They can attribute it to whoever they want, but I know I popularized. <laughs> not no, only yours. that, not only that, the step back jumper. I was doing it before anybody was. Yeah. That's 1966, and I probably was the first to ever grow a full beard. <laughs> <laughs> Influence. So, but for what those who saying, didn't have the privilege of playing against Archie or watching him play, he could control the action. The action for the whole game. Yeah. You know, he and, and six two. Yeah. And he, but he, he could control the offense, the defense, the transition, both ways transition. He could control the culture. And then when he could no longer play, he said, what else can I do? How else can I help? And that's what he, and he's sitting here in the middle chair today. And he got a standing ovation when the he was legend. introduced. Yeah. Archie Clark. Archie yes. Clark. You guys the legend. Legend. Me. We love you, Archie. Now, I, I, and I, we I, thank you. You got we a lot thank of fans you. We love there, you. Man. We are eternally grateful. A lot of fans in here, and I know you don't want to say it, but we're going to do our part to see what we can do to get Archie Clark into the Hall of Fame where he rightfully deserves to be. So for myself... Because all, other four, all of the other four founders are in. Mm -hmm. This is our last mission. This, this is the next some, mission. Yes. This is next, what's next. next. Isn't it time to go? <laughs> <laughs> He's so humble. <laughs> For but hey, you know, uh, for, uh, if he was only named Dave, I'm, 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 <laughs> you know, I'm, um, I have a gift of empathy. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, tears come out. I can see a movie or whatever, and, yeah. and or if someone's telling a story about something that you know, I, I can empathize with that. That that's a, a family trait. My mom was like that and everything, so it, it happens to me even when you talk about it, you know. Yeah. So you yeah, excuse these tears. That was not beautiful. Honest. It's tears of joy. We get tears of joy, tears of appreciation of for you pride. and for all you've done. Yeah. Uh, Gratitude. For, my, for myself, for Bill Walton, for Spencer Haywood, for the pioneer Archie Clark. Uh, thank you all for joining me in the lounge. We'll have to do this again sometime. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bill. Archie, happy birthday, man. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Just getting started in 81. Way to yeah. go, Jim. <laughs>